Okay, so the first step in configuring our communications is, is we open RS links. We go to communications. We go to configure drivers. And I already have a DF1 driver running, so I'm going to click on configure. Just make sure my settings are correct, and I'm going to auto configure. And when it does that, it should go through and test the configuration. And if we're successful, auto configuration will show. Okay, we can close that now. We go to communications, RS who. We click on the DF1 driver, and if we were successful, we should see a picture of our processor, which we have titled untitled here in the image. So we've established communication. So now the next step here is to open our RS Logics program. Because before we begin programming, remember in the previous VILOS, we had to go through and configure everything to tell it what type of information we were going to be using. So we click on New. We go to the 1747L532E processor. And I'm sure it's right here. So L532E is the one I'm looking for. And there it is. And we hit OK. That brings up the processor we're going to use. Then we go to I.O. Configuration. And since we already know what's in the slots, we can manually enter them. But we're going to read I.O. Config since we're already established using RS Logic. So read I.O. Config. And it's telling us it wants to resize the data tables. That's perfectly fine because the one we selected has probably been upgraded. Okay, so from there, we have set up the PLC program. Now the last thing to do is all the hard work that we put in creating our Excel file, we're going to upload that. So we're going to go to Tools. We're going to click on Database. And we're going to click on ASCII to Import. We're going to be importing the tags into this program. Okay, so this window pops up, tells you the directives here. We want to click on the CSV file. And we want to make sure that the box for address slash symbol description is checked. And it's okay to overwrite existing records because there are no records in here. So we'll just hit OK since this is a blank program. So now, here is my base station. I'm going to actually use this one, which is one that I created earlier, which is stored on my desktop. So here it goes. This is the file that I'm going to import. And now it's telling me that it has a couple errors in it. And that's OK. It's, it's got some things that it wants to override, and that's fine. Some of that is the tag headings that we used in Microsoft Excel. So we'll just go ahead and hit OK. Okay, now if we scroll down over here on the left, we should be able to click on addresses and symbols. And in our database, if we are going to expand this, we will see all of the hard work that we put into our Excel file has now paid off. Because everything that we need to program in this particular project is now in the PLC. So as we started off with our inputs, here we can see them all right here. Start PB, stop PB, auto manual, reset, some tran this one has a lot more cylinders in it because it's complete. When you get yours complete, it will look the same. Next here is our outputs. We've got all of those, station alarm, extend transfer cylinder, ex retract transfer cylinder, extend rejection, the store empty, etc. All of our outputs are there. All of our inputs are there. And we have our sequence of events that we pre-recorded with step 0 through step 9. Those are all associated with binary bit B3 colon 2 0 as the word B3 colon 2. Here are our work bits home, auto, manual, and reset. And here is the input logic that we're going to use. So basically we are almost ready to start programming. So this is what RS Logix typically looks like. There's basically a, a four-step process that I like to use when I'm programming, with step one being setting up my inputs. Step two then would be defining my work bits. Step three is going to be defining my step logic or my series of events. And then finally, step four is going to be where I program the outputs. 
So as a PLC programmer, you can really choose where you want to begin, but we've already done the most important part, which was preparing to program. We have to have an idea of what you're going to program, how this machine is going to operate, how it functions, and how everything works together. From the schematics on the electrical side, to the pneumatic side, to the input cards, and to the output cards. Everything works together as a complete unit. So at this point, we are actually ready to start programming our input logic.